Looking for cheap and reliable College 25 Ultimate Team coins? Head on over to MMO EXP and use code Poodle at checkout for 5% off your order. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another CFB 25 Dynasty Mode video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the most overpowered coaching abilities that you need in CFB 25. Now, before we do get into the video, guys, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, comment if you have any questions, and subscribe if you're new. If you haven't already, check out Underdog. My link will be down below in the description. Signing up with Underdog helps out this channel a lot, and if you use my code, you can get your first deposit matched up to 250. So we're going to take this step by step, starting with the talent developer. So each one, keep in mind with some of these are kind of the same. So when I say a certain tier, I'm basically referring to all of them. So starting with talent developer, as you see, tier one, two, three, four are the same for each one. It's just a difference of position. And I will give you a quick tidbit about that in about a second. But first, for talent developer, the one that I find to be the best from this entire tree is the first one, which is Portal King transfers are more interested and i say transfers because that applies across all of them depending on what position you choose so super important because basically you can lock up the fact that you'll be able to get increased interest on those specific players every year in the transfer portal now i wouldn't recommend let's say the quarterback one because the odds of you finding a quarterback that you want and both need at the same time in the transfer portal every year that you can also then win very low i'd recommend doing tier one is the main one i like there's a few other ones i like here but tier one's the one i'm mostly concerned with for increasing interest in a game that's a big about recruiting and bringing players in, I want to give myself every advantage to always be ahead of everyone else. And this one will give you more interest off rip. So if you look at these, what I'd recommend are doing position groups, at least initially, that benefit more. So O-line is five positions. Secondaries, four, five, six positions, depending on how many you're going to have, how many corners you're going to have, how many saves you're going to have on the field. But it's quite a few. Linebackers are quite a few. And same with D-line. I probably wouldn't invest in the halfback one or the quarterback one. I'd probably like this for a position that I'm going to be able to get some depth with in the transfer portal for instance let's say i get a cornerback class of only two and i'm kind of short in the roster i can just go in here and recruit two or three corners pretty easily in the transfer portal and i get increased interest next i'm gonna start with the recruiter tab then go to the elite recruiter tab so under the recruiting tab i'm mainly focusing on tier two as my first one recruiting actions give a bonus to the position you choose same concept as before try to do the bulk positions first unless you absolutely want someone that you see and you have some points to use it on but tier two is the most influential. That's one of the ones I like a lot. Tier three, always be recruiting. Increase weekly recruiting hours. This is so huge in my online league that I do. I'm currently ahead on a bunch of five stars that I or and four stars that I thought I had no chance at. And mainly it's because I have 60 recruiting hours towards my position player and I can even gain more. And tier three is gonna give you more hours. While everyone else is recruiting with 50 plus limited hours, you're gonna be able to give them an extra 10, 15, 20 that's huge you're pretty much getting an extra half a week on everyone so that's a really important one i love tier three and then tier four increase starting interest from the position that is huge starting interest plays such a large role in the optic game if you're the first overall person in a position a lot of other teams may see that and just not even go for it because your interest is higher than theirs when all things are equal in a recruiting chart and everyone looks equal i am willing to fight for it when I go there and see that I'm six down the list and it almost looks like a stagnated chart where everyone's kind of ahead of me and the first person's like a decent amount ahead of me, I may not even get in that race, especially for a good player. So there's a good way to keep people away from some top prospects and make sure that you have a better chance at each one. Now going into elite recruiter, my favorite one here is the first one, lasting impression, gaining additional interest for every 10 hours spent. So let's say, let's say for every 10 hours, you got one green, maybe you got a green and a quarter, right? I'm talking about arrows. It's not, it might not show it optically, but the point is when you spend 50 hours or 60 or 70 hours, you're going to get increased interest for every 10. So technically it's a seven times booster increase. That's not, not a direct science, right? It's not going to be times seven, but for every 10, which is seven of them in a 70 or five and a 50. Now, of course, it's not a direct science. You're not going to get it seven times or five times, but for every incre increment of 10, you are going to get an additional boost, which is great. Again, anything that gives you a leg up on the competition is always huge. And the next one I really like is tier three, boost the pipeline bonus so this is important a lot of these things stack so keep that in mind as we go through this video same concept as before definitely focus on position groups that hit a lot of them but a boost the pipeline bonus is going to be very very useful and very very big to situation four booster ideal pitch grades is good too but i'm more focused on that initial interest the initial pipelines right away because everything's kind of exponential week one sets the tone for how quickly you're going to outpace people and where you stand I, I want things that hit right away so ideal pitch is great but that's more when it comes time to pitch them so overall those are my favorite from elite recruiter 
obviously a lot of these things in this game are good but today's video is the most overpowered the things like i'm going to be aiming for as i build up my coach on the strategist tab there are two here the one's more of an honorable mention and i'll explain why so tier two is one of the ones i like here visits have a bigger impact on prospects this is useful just because visits do give you a boost making sure that you do visits with a complimentary gives you a boost making sure that you do visits for the right type of game versus not the right type of game is a boost versus a loss so i especially like that you can almost add on top of this for just a general visit this may help if you're just trying to do bi-week visits or easy weeks this may give you that extra boost in terms of not doing it against great opponents especially when you're a lower program now the one that i do like but it is situational is mind reader so a lot of people are complaining mind reader sounds great learn the dev trait of the player when they visit potentially increased chance but some people then said by the time they visit they're already committed that is the case if you're booking your commits after week eight nine but honestly for my sims i've honestly gotten to a point where i'm booking my recruits earlier for visits because i've realized that yeah that is the case you are booking them you are doing it later but if you do schedule visits for week four may, it's, it's part of the strategy mind reader is good if you do that now it only is an increased chance it's not guaranteed that's why it's not the most overpowered thing but let's just say you had a quarterback stable of like four that you were recruiting and you invited them for visits like week four five six or maybe even two of them and mind reader unlocked that the five star you really wanted was normal dev it's like all right Cool, I can drop my points on him. A normal depth five star, I really don't want that. Or if it showed you that a four star was elite depth, that guy's gonna be a 99 overall stub at the end of his career. I want him. It could really be the difference between recruiting the right and wrong guy and then putting your hours elsewhere. So it is useful. I do think it's situational. I think it depends on the program you are and how how much you can just force visits early, etc. But I do think it's pretty solid. I don't know if it's the most overpowered, but it's definitely an honorable mention. An architect, the only one I like here is limitless, which is tier two. Tra chance to increase a random skill cap when leveling up. This is useful in terms of let's say your player has a skill cap for throw power your quarterback at a 92 it does give him the potential that when he does level up and upgrade an overall that the skill cap can just break open and go up another spot and technically his throw power can now get to a 94 95 96 this does pretty much means like like it says your position is now your player is limitless they can go beyond their skill cap so they're no longer locked to what they are of course it is an increased chance but it is interesting i do like the idea of this because it does work across your position group so it would be useful same concept like i keep saying i'm not going to repeat it beyond after this but it, doing it on o-line and doing it on positions that you know it will work on now in this one specifically though i will i do like quarterback but the only issue that is the second one so you have to buy the first one first but it's additional xp it's useful i do like quarterback because honestly quarterback is a position where like you may want more throw power you may you may want more speed things that are going to be possibly locked out and you can break that open o-line like do i want the more strength is it going to be if it's going to be a difference maker there maybe not so this is the only one that I may flip to more of those speed skill type positions with those key stats. Motivator, my favorite one here, and I think the most overpowered one is the put in the work tier three. This does give you an off season training boost. So every year at the end of the year, players are reevaluated. They get their upgrades, their training boost. This will give them a bigger boost in the off season via training. So this is something that I find, I find so important. Now I do, there's two points to this game, right? There's bringing in talent, then there's developing talent. You can bring in all the talent you want, but if you don't develop them well, they're not going to be that great. Although the game does a pretty good job of auto-developing players as you go along, regardless of performance, just based on dev traits and based on where they sit on the thing, that way they have a red shirt, based on their playing time. But this will give you extra boost. Let's say you have like an elite dev guy or star dev guy. They may go up an extra overall or two or three just by having this. And this works across the position groups. So this would be a great way to develop an entire position group. The only issue with this one is it is tier three. So you do have to kind of go deep on that one. But that's really the main one that I like from this group, although there are some other ones. It's really tough to go all the way down to that third one, so I'm not going to recommend too many more in here. Next is Program Builder. So in Program Builder, there are two that I really, really like. The first one is Roster Retention. I think all of them in here are something that if you can get access to, you should. The first one is players with a third to seventh round draft projection are less likely to go pro. These will be the players that aren't your top tier guys, but your, your great structural pieces. This will keep them on your team longer. And the reason roster retention is so important is because here's the here's the issue with college, with college ball and, and playing this game. In Madden, when you play and you build up a stud roster, you sign them to long-term deals, you lock them up, they're on your team. You're, you're constantly like climbing the mountain and solidifying a great roster. In college, you may finally, in your third year, finally get that roster you love, not win the natty because you're short like two players. And then you recruit those two players but in the offseason, two of your other, your key pass rusher and key left tackle leave, and now you're back at square one. So you're constantly flipping. This is a great way to keep those juniors who are NFL ready, those, like the Harold Perkins of the world, right? Keep those guys another year and bring them all together while they're seniors with their new freshmen. So that's one way. And then also players less likely to transfer is so important. I've lost Emory Jones in almost every sim I've done as LSU, my tackle, due to playing style and due to deal breakers that right off the rip they're upset about. 
being able to stop them from transferring or make it less likely helps your entire roster i think any ability that for 12 points helps your entire roster is always useful right this isn't position this is just the entire team will be less likely to transfer and let's run it back it's important because that's second round draft projections so second round draft players are players that are in the 90s those are those are high performers right first rounders only 32 players across the entire country second rounders is the majority of a lot of good players on teams right now the next one is going to be the high integrity which is over here in the top right corner high integrity so first one is gift of gab then there's roster retainer and full refund honestly the one i like the most here is just tier two under high integrity so roster retainer persuades have a higher success rate same exact reason for emory jones i have lost him in like all four of them finally i had gotten the package to reduce the likelihood of them transferring and like lower that he was a little bit lower and then when it came time to persuade him with the roster retainer i was able to keep him there which was the first time out of like six franchises i kept him so it is important because it is the worst feeling it's not like for agency where you could lose them and try to rebid on them and you can just offer a max deal like when it says they are not interested they're gone that's it transfer portal done gonzo like that is a horrible feeling if you lost a guy like emory jones 90 plus overall superstar tackle so having a roster retainer is great because it gives you it gives you a little bit more hope and again impacts your entire roster to here so in relationship builder i like the entirety of this chart and in strong roots i like the entirety of the chart so both of these i'm not going to go too in depth on them because they're pretty self-explanatory but they upgrade your pipelines once again it impacts your entire recruiting process upgrade your school best two pipelines upgrade your school's five best pipelines upgrade your school's five worst so the ones that you weren't great at pipeline wise but you had some boost they got better your five best that you're already winning at get even better and give you an extra leg up upgrade your two best pipelines by one whole tier that's huge boost your primary pipeline boost your starting interest from your primary pipeline that's huge that means the guys that are in your pipeline you know your, your guys that you always get they'll get even higher interest they kind of keep everyone away like they, they start high wanting to go to you i love both of these a lot i would highly recommend if you can putting some points towards these whether or not it's all i think it should be all but those are two great entire trees and last but not least the ceo this is incredibly hard to unlock you need to win two national championships in an online competitive league this is going to be very impossible for many people very unlikely and in all finally you probably could do it rather quickly considering it's easier to beat the cpu starting with dream school a chance at an instant commit when offering scholarship as a top school this is awesome because this prevents people from beating you out if there's a guy that has clear interest in you and you make an offer you have the chance to get some instant commits this would be a great way to lock up a five star here and there a four star right off rip obviously you can get instant commits other ways when they're near the they're near the tip of the edge but this means if you're the main school their top school there's always a chance to get an instant commit i love that it impacts the entirety of it the next one i like is going to be portal preview able to see other schools at risk players sometimes when recruiting i'm recruiting a position i'm like well what if like you know jeremiah smith of ohio state or judkins or one of those guys come out right then i don't need this running back i would love to be able to go across throughout the season and just check out other teams see what their portal is looking like see what talents can hit the board so i know how to recruit accordingly fully knowing that you might be a top school a top tier school right and also seeing the state of other rosters you might be it might give you like an ego thing too right like, okay my, my roster is intact other people are falling apart it's a great way to kind of know where you stand and check yourself a little bit next one i like is second chance keeper spend a second persuade on a player if it fails this is what i was talking about before you increase the likelihood of them not leaving you increase your ability to persuade you make it much harder for them to leave now if emory jones says no you can then do it again usually it's one and done now this gives you both a second chance reroll the dice and your chances are already lower so honestly getting two should be enough i love second chance keeper for that reason delay sunday is the ultimate retention ability i know it's expensive but every year in my sims will campbell and harold perkins tell me to screw off and it's almost inevitable to keep them because they're gonna be they're great players and they're gonna be great now this might be able to, for me to keep them till their senior year keeping will campbell and harold perkins one more year plus souping up that offense which desperately needs help would make lsu a power like a, a super power team in after one season and but unfortunately by losing will campbell and perkins it kind of sets me back one more year in terms of building up both sides of the ball so this is a very important one is it guaranteed no but is it helpful to have again it impacts the whole roster i love the ones that impact the whole roster but that pretty much wraps it up guys those are the most overpowered abilities i think you guys need comment down below if you have any others that you feel that we missed or you think are honorable mentions and let me know debate it down below in the comments give this video a big thumbs up it helps you out sub if you're new and of course as always check out underdog if you haven't thank you so much for watching i'm out peace